Most airplanes follow standard design norms and have a predictable configuration. This is because most aircraft designers always design an airplane around a central concept of functionality. But in a race, to get a more functional airplane, engineers have come out with strange-looking airplanes. Some planes are so weird that few can believe they did exist at a certain moment. In this video you will see the 10 most strangest planes ever made in the world. But before we jump into number 1, be sure that you have subscribed and hit the bell icon to keep yourself informed with amazing videos. With that said let's jump into our incredible list. Bartini Birev, VVA-14. Seeing this amphibious aircraft you would think that it was got from a sci-fi film set. But this clever Soviet-era plane was a vertical takeoff and landing amphibious aircraft, but it was also so much more as a simple seaplane. Developed by the Soviet Union in the early 1970s, this craft took advantage of the wing and ground effect to cruise over water and landing with huge payloads. Designed as a high-performance, long-endurance transport that could launch from water and cruise at high speed over long distances. When the Soviet Union began to fear that the US would launch a nuclear assault on them from under the water with their submarines, they turned to the Birev Aircraft Company which was well known for making seaplanes. It was designed by Robert Bartini, and two prototypes were built which flew over 100 test flights, although the VTOL system was not tested. X-36, Talus Fighter Agility Research Aircraft. The McDonnell Douglas X-36 Talus Fighter Agility Research Aircraft was an American stealthy subscale prototype jet designed to fly without the traditional empennage found on most aircraft. The X-36 was built to 28% scale of a possible fighter aircraft and was controlled by a pilot in a ground-based virtual cockpit with a view provided by a video camera mounted in the canopy of the aircraft. Its first flight was in May 1997. It is now retired. But not before it set records and spurred on further innovation that is currently patrolling the skies today. The X-36 possessed high maneuverability that would be ideal for use as a fighter. Despite its potential suitability and highly successful test program, there have been no reports regarding further development of the X-36 or any derived design. Lockheed XFV-1, Tailsitter. The Lockheed XFV was an American experimental tailsitter prototype aircraft built by Lockheed in the early 1950s to demonstrate the operation of a vertical takeoff and landing fighter for protecting convoys. Due to the limited space deck on U.S. Navy ships. The Navy was interested in developing vertical takeoff and landing fighters to protect Navy convoys. The XF was designed to fill that need. Looking like a turboprop that somehow got stood on end, the XFV took on the nickname of the Salmon after namesake chief test pilot Herman Salmon who made the first test flight in June of 1954. However the skill sets needed for pilots for the vertical takeoffs and landings were simply too high, and the project was cancelled a year later. Bought V-173, the Flying Pancake. This is definitely one of the most bizarre aircraft designs that easily fit among the strange aircrafts that actually existed, but apparently the weird design was not without purpose. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Navy wanted an aircraft which could take off and land in restricted areas, such as the deck of an aircraft carrier. This new aircraft was expected to combat the Japanese fighter airplanes and submarines. Vought was a company famous for producing great aircraft such as the iconic F-4U Corsair fighter airplane. In 1942, they started working on the flying flapjack design, a shape that had no discrete nose, tail or wing section. Instead the whole body resembled a pancake-like shape, with two propellers sticking out at the tip of each side. The Vought V-173 design was promising with specifications given at the time promised great maneuverability and speeds up to 452 miles per hour. However, it came at the time when the United States Navy was switching from propeller-driven to jet-propelled aircraft. By 1946, the Vought V-173 project was already long over its expected development time and well over budget. With jet aircraft coming into service, the Navy finally cancelled the project on 17 March 1947, and the prototype aircraft Vought V-173 was transferred to the Smithsonian Museum for display. Caspian Sea Monster the Corable Maggot, also known in English as the Caspian Sea Monster, 
was a Soviet experimental aircraft developed by the Central Hydrofoil Design Bureau in the 1960s. The KM began operation in 1966 and was continuously tested by the Soviet Navy until 1980, when it crashed into the Caspian Sea. The KM was the largest and heaviest aircraft in the world from 1966 to 1988, and its surprise discovery by the United States and the subsequent attempts to determine its purpose became a distinctive event of espionage during the Cold War. When photographs taken from spy satellites showed the KM taxiing during testing near Kaspersk, the strange aircraft puzzled intelligence agencies in the Western world, noting the small stubby wings despite its large size, as well as the KM markings and flag of the Soviet Navy on its fuselage. Lund Class MD-160 A Chronoplane During the Cold War, the Soviets were experimenting with a special kind of aircraft known as an Akranoplane. It had part plane, part hover vehicle, almost part boat. The Lund class Akranoplane was a very visually confusing aircraft. This Soviet beast was gargantuan in size and impressive in firepower. The Akranoplane weighed in at 350 tons and was equipped with six Sunburn SSN-22 anti-ship missile launchers, along with 50 caliber machine guns and 23mm cannons. The craft was designed to take advantage of ground effect. In fact, it flew in ground effect all the time, at a cruising altitude of just 16 feet above the water. Not only did this improve fuel efficiency and cruising speed, but it also rendered the Akranoplane virtually invisible, since radar at the time wasn't able to pick up very low-flying aircraft. However the Lund's large size would make it an easy target for fighter aircraft. Plans to build another stop due to the collapse of the Soviet Union. The single MD-160 that was produced remained in service from 1987 until 1997, and is now sitting inactive at a Kaspiysk naval station. Kalinin K-7 Airplane. Kalinin K-7 Airplane was a heavy experimental aircraft designed and tested in the Soviet Union in the early 1930s. It had unusual configuration, with twin booms and large underwing pods housing fixed landing gear and machine gun turrets. With a wingspan of more than 170 feet, this plane is also called the Russian Flying Fortress. It is so large that it looks as if it can never fly successfully, but it actually flew. The K-7 needed a flight crew of at least 11 members to be flown successfully, and its maximum flying speed was a mere 140 miles per hour. Still, it could carry 120 passengers, 15,000 pounds of mail, or 112 fully equipped paratroopers. Its design was indeed unusual, because it contained six tractor engines in the front, and a single engine in the rear of the plane. However the accident, that killed 14 people on board and one on the ground, ended its testing in the early days. F-117 Nighthawk The Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk is a semi-retired American single-seat twin-engine stealth attack aircraft that was developed by Lockheed's Secretive Skunk Works Division and operated by the United States Air Force. It was the first operational aircraft to be designed around stealth technology. Often called the Wobbling Goblin, the F-117 was designed to have a very low radar cross-section. It ended up working very well for American pilots, easily penetrating Iraq's vaunted air defense system. The F-117 was based on the Have Blue technology demonstrator. The Nighthawk's maiden flight took place in 1981 at Groom Lake, Nevada, and the aircraft achieved initial operating capability status in 1983. The aircraft was shrouded in secrecy until it was revealed to the public in 1988. Of the 64 F-117s built, 59 were production versions, with the other five being prototypes. A shootdown of two aircrafts during the Yugoslavia conflict led to its retirement by the US Air Force in 2008 and replaced by the F-22 Raptor. Despite the type's official retirement, a portion of the fleet has been kept in airworthy condition, and Nighthawks have been observed flying since 2009. Nemeth Parasol In 1934, the Nemeth Parasol, built by students at Miami University, demonstrated that even a circular wing could be used to fly a plane reliably. This plane was a parasol wing above a conventional fuselage and tail. It was powered by a propeller and a tractor configuration. Caproni CA-60. The early days of aviation were like the Wild West, and designers could basically do whatever they wanted. There were no computer simulations to help test the feasibility of a design. You simply dreamed it up, built it and went for it. 
The Caproni CA-60 was a prototype of a large nine-wing flying boat. It was originally intended to be a 100-passenger transatlantic airliner. It had featured eight engines and three sets of ripple wings. It was 77 foot long, 30 foot high, and of 60 foot wide. Its first flight was in 1921, and it was destroyed on its second flight. Northrop Tacit Blue The Northrop Tacit Blue was a technology demonstrator aircraft created to demonstrate that a low observable stealth surveillance aircraft with a low probability of intercept radar and other sensors could operate close to the forward line of battle with a high degree of survivability. Sometimes also called an alien school bus for its only slightly rounded off rectangular shape. Featured a straight tapered wing with a V-tail mounted on an oversized fuselage with a curved shape. It was the first stealth aircraft to feature curved surfaces for radar cross-section reduction. Northrop would use this stealth technology on the B-2 bomber. The aircraft made its first successful flight on February 5, 1982, in Area 51, at Groom Lake, Nevada. After reaching about 250 flight hours, the aircraft was placed in storage in 1985. In 1996, after Tacit Blue was declassified, it was placed on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, near Dayton, Ohio, and has been on display in the new fourth hangar at the museum since June 2016.